welcome everybody at this very special place, the Coronation Hall in Aachen. Welcome to a very special occasion, the inauguration of the Käthe Hamburger Kolleg Kulturen des Forschens, Cultures of Research, or short CORE. My name is Jan Martin Viada, I'm a journalist for education and research, and I'm looking forward to two hours of celebrating the new Kolleg, and moreover, to celebrating science and research. So today we will learn what this new colleague is about. We will get insights in its research and we will discuss the present and future transformations of research cultures. We are very delighted to welcome you today <clears throat> to the inauguration of our Kete Hamburger Kolleg, Cultures of Research. The Kete Hamburger Kolleg is an international center for advanced studies. It is named after the literary scholar and philosopher Kete Hamburger, who immigrated to Sweden in 1934 because of her, uh, of her Jewish heritage. And I think we, we are happy to, to have this name because I think this is really has a lot of, of connection to us as the cultures of research. The Kita Hamburger Kolleg is therefore an epistemically multi-layered cross-border project. Is it also in a cultural sense? On the one hand, we are very happy that lively community of science technology studies not only already exists in the Euregio Maastricht, Liege and Aachen but it's also setting out together on the path to new horizons. The Kete Hamburger Kolleg, which is sponsored by the Federal Ministry of Education and Research, fits in perfectly here. It is the first center of advanced studies at RWTH Aachen, and surprisingly, the first of its kind at a technical university at all. This shows even more that social sciences and humanities do play an important role at RWTH Aachen University as integrated and interdisciplinary University of Science and Technology. The Kete Hamburger Kolleg sheds light on the scientific foundations of knowledge creation, the infrastructures, the epistemic foundations, and the manifold interactions of science and society. And it thus allows us to really rethink what it means to innovate in the 21st century. The Kete Hamburger Kolleg uh, has the potential to really keep us nimble, to allow us to be innovative and think outside the box. Our Kete Hamburger Kolleg at Aachen is dedicated to cultures of research as an international center for advanced studies on history, philosophy and sociology of science and technology. This means to give scholars from humanities and social sciences a full year of free time to concentrate on writing a book or writing seminal papers uh, or developing ideas for the upcoming years. What was and is really astonishing in times of efficiency, time pressure and deliverables is the strengthening of freedom for researchers because freedom requires trust in the willingness of using this free space for substantial work. This is anything but given in today's academia, but it is exactly what we dream of as researcher as time has become the most valuable good in science. Of course, we have a mission uh, at the Kete Hamburger Kolleg in Aachen. We are convinced that today's scientific as well as technological developments require fundamental historical, epistemic and societal reflections for democratic decision making. Together with the fellows, international guests and colleagues from our university, we aim to better understand future transformations of research today and in view of the past. The impact of artificial intelligence, for instance, of social robots, of new forms of man-machine coexistences, as well as the transformation of the scientific system itself towards open ed participatory formats and substantially uh, sustainability are much discussed topics in our colleague. Science is research cultures. It is that all the way through, and they will remain essential. And if the Kete Hamburger colleague has that as a topic, that's fantastic. I think science, without understanding it, is problematic. You need some sort of, we have no English term for the nice German 
zur Nachvollziehbarkeit, was happening in science. And colleagues like this can do that, uh, and that's essential. It's essential for policy, it's essential for the public, it's essential for the cultures, research cultures themselves. They also need that. We need it in sociology and everyone else needs that Nachvollziehbarkeit. What are we actually doing? Um, it is now almost 25 years uh, that Karin uh, um, coined uh, the term uh, Wissenskulturen or epistemic cultures. And the colleague, it's now 25 years later, and the colleague has in its title Research Cultures. Uh, my wish would be uh, that um, the outcome is um, a step forward in this reflection about scientific cultures. The question of a possible engineering turn in the sciences can only be answered adequately if epistemologically, epistemological as well as epistemic practical analysis are carried out in a close interaction. This means cultivating interdisciplinarity between philosophy of science and sociology of science. You will think, well, that's really close together, but it isn't. That's the point here. It's really a, a not an easy task to solve, and that's precisely the ground why it's one of our tasks. It's, I think it's probably, in, I would think it's in, in science and engineering, and what we try to establish here, it's it's the most difficult uh, path to take because you, each of us basically has to leave his or her comfort zone, mm -hmm. has to make time to understand what the other person says in, in, it's in his or her models that, they, that we all have in the way we look at the world. Uh, being able uh, to understand each other, working on the same goal uh, to solve a, a societal problem really gives also the motivation to understand the, the, the language and uh, the needs and to, uh, identify a, a single question uh, which one then interdisciplinary can solve and that uh, worked here quite well or works here quite well. What I've heard here is a neat kind of analogy in Aachen, the Swiss knife analogy. Uh, humans are usable for a lot of things, like a Swiss knife, but for nothing very well. So should humans have been replaced a long time ago uh, by models based on data is a question that arises in these fields. Are we getting lost in the data? The quantity of data is enormous. In, in, in sociology, it's greater than 100K, uh, but in physics and in astrophysics, it's in the billions and trillions of gigabytes now. And, and that has to do with telescopes and detectors becoming bigger and bigger and working differently and producing more data. Astrophysics is an interesting example because they used to uh, give the data to some of the lay astronomers, you know, to see, sift through some of the data and find patterns. What happens in these areas is that they replace it by machine learning. It can no longer done, be done by human, even if you have 100,000 lay uh, astronomers sitting in their backyards and trying to help, it's not enough. So it's all, it's shifting to machine learning, algorithms doing the pattern recognition, uh, supervised or unsupervised, and, and that also happens in sociology in these fields because we have hundreds of thousands of articles we can now look at, or hundreds of thousands, not hundreds of thousands, more than that, of Twitter passages mm -hmm. exactly. we can look at. Like. I would like to, on the, on, the, on the vast amount of data uh, and, and analyzing them, I think it's, it's AI, machine learning, is, is a, a fantastic way to search for traces or, or evidence that we would not see immediately. That is very important, I think. But then there are also sciences that are synthetic in, 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 in their activity, where you make new things. Engineering sciences, let's say mechanical engineering, new machines, chemical engineering, new molecules, bio, biochemical. I think there, 
the question is, can we, can we really get that creativity in there? I'm, I am not quite sure whether you not just need serendipity and the human being looking at it, because the algorithms in the end can only do what you have been telling them. And I would also argue that in, in these times where we have all those societal challenges that are more and more pressing, I don't have to, to tell them all, um, we need even more uh, human researchers to translate those societal developments and needs into research questions. You need clever people to put these kinds of things together and you also need to be clever enough to, to bring the edges of different, mm -hmm. of different um, epistemic cultures to, uh, to get into contact because that is actually the sparks from where um, serendipity arises, from where new kind of um, um, pathways of, of research can possibly follow, not necessarily, but you have to create these spaces and mm. I think I see this as the central mm. point. So we talked about present future transformation of research cultures and the role of the Kate Hamburger colleague in it and I think it's great that Aachen has this colleague now and that you can do work with international scholars of some, on some of those questions we discussed today and the, the fun part is to do work on the questions we haven't discussed here because we don't know them yet. Thank you so much Professor Reinberger, Professor Blank, Professor Wessling and Professor Knotzetina. Thank you so much and applause for all of you. Thank you.